Steiner, Doctor of Medicine. Tonight's story has the title, Walk with Lions. Guardian of birth, healer of the sick, comforter of the aged. And the qualities of the worthy physician are three. The eye of an eagle, the heart of a lion, the hand of a woman. Our presentation tonight, the field of internal medicine. The object in point, a picture of a professional fighter. It's a typical photograph used for publicity purposes. It may reflect a fighter's glory, sometimes his past. The case in point, Daniel Francis Ortega. He's 18 years of age, both parents are dead. He lives with his sister and her husband. Danny likes to draw, he wants to be a commercial artist. To raise money for his education, he works at two jobs, professional prize fighting and ushering at an all-night movie theater downtown. Life hasn't been generous with Danny, but he faces the future with confidence and courage. Within 48 hours, that courage will be tested to the breaking point. Danny, you're late. Dorman didn't show up. I had to work overtime. You shouldn't work overtime if you have to go to the gym. It's too much for you. Al's awake, honey. Better wait a while before you go in the bedroom. You know how he is. Yeah, okay, Rose. Drawing board, what happened? Oh, gee, sweetie, I I'm sorry. Al tripped over it in the dark last night. He couldn't have. I always leave it right there in that corner. Well, I don't think he meant to. You know what a temper Al's got. He didn't have to break it. Well, I don't think he meant to. He, he kicked it. It broke. I don't start a beef with him, huh? It cost me nine seventy-five. Well, maybe you can fix it. Get some glue at the dime store. Yeah, maybe. How about a new job, honey? You having any luck? Mindy might give me something with a trucking company. He's got an in with the owner. Hard time job in the afternoons. Truck drivers make good money. I'll just be a helper to load and docks at first. Please, Danny. You know how he is about the paper. Okay, my board. Can I even look at the paper? Well, you can see it later. I don't want him to get mad. Morning, sweetheart. Breakfast is ready. Hello, Al. Yeah. Red beans, sweetheart. You like them so well, I... I cooked them up special. Got some coffee? Right away. Al, Danny's going to work for a trucking company. Afternoon job. Isn't that nice? Yeah, sure. He's just going to be a helper to start with, but, but maybe they'll like him. They might learn him to drive a truck after a while. Your brother Lou, he learned how to drive a truck. Says here they're going to raise the bus fares again. Lousy. They nick you 40 cents a day to get back and forth as it is. They say truck drivers make good money. If Danny worked full time at it, I bet he'd make enough to give up prize fighting, too. It'd be a good break for the kid, wouldn't it, Al? I'd only waste the dough on that art junk. He ought to go out and learn a trade. But he likes to draw, Al. He's good at it, too. No future in it. Let him get a man's job. If he can handle it. I gotta take off. I'll see you later, huh? Aren't you gonna eat? I'm not hungry. 
I'll leave when I get back from the gym. Save me some beans, will you, Rose? I'll leave them in the icebox. Forgot to tell you. We're going up to Al's mother's. Oh. We won't be gone more than a day or so. Okay, I can eat downtown. I'll see you. Hey, Buster. Keep your junk out of the way after this, huh? I almost tripped on that board of yours and broke my neck last night. I'm sorry, Al. I'd hate to have that happen. Pretty lousy. I know, I just can't seem to get going. You go on over the ring and do a couple of rounds with Henry. Henry, get ready. Now look, here's what I want you to do. I want you to get in there and I want you to keep on moving and watch his right. He likes to sneak in a right hand lead. And listen, he can hit. You understand? Are you ready, Henry? In a minute. Okay, now get in there. All right. Tie! All right, keep moving. Come on, move! Move, Henry. Come on, move him. Henry, make him work. Keep moving. Up, Danny. Up. Come on, Hank. Work him. Time. Time. What are you guys doing? What do you think this is? A title match? What's the matter, Dan? What happened? I didn't hit you that hard. I don't know. I just ran out of steam, I guess. How do you feel? Oh, I'm okay. I just took a shower. I feel fine. Sit down here, will you? Let me get a drink, huh? I can't seem to get enough water. There's something I want you to do for me, Danny, the first thing tomorrow. Yeah? I want you to see a doctor. What for? Just because I'm off one day? I'll be okay tomorrow. Look, Danny, you've been off your pace for weeks and it's been building. You've lost weight, no stamina, you just haven't got it anymore, kid. What are you getting at, Mindy? Your preliminary, I just cancel it. What for? I'm not sick. Can't you see that? I ate some bad food or something. I can fight next week. I've got to. I need the money. You can't take a chance. I won't let you. I need that fight. I've got to have the money. I quit my job at the theater last night. I've got room and board to pay and some other things. I need the money. Why didn't you tell me? I could have pressured Max into lining you up at the trucking company. Mindy, eight weeks ago you said you'd have that job lined up in a couple of days. I kept waiting for it. It didn't come. Doing my training here every day, working at the show at night. I held out as long as I could. I don't know, maybe the hours got too much. I'm sorry, kid. I know it's my fault. But look, don't worry about it, will you? I'll take care of everything this weekend for sure. Sometimes I forget. But I still want you to get a complete checkup. Now look, will you see the doc tomorrow? Oh, sure, anything you say. And don't worry about the money. You're gonna have whatever you need. Well, that's nice of you, Mindy, but you can't afford to put out dough for beginners. Doesn't figure. That's what they told Jack Dempsey's first manager.
patient? Mm. What history has he got? He's in severe coma. Only one obvious symptom, he's been vomiting. Could be poison. I doubt it, though. Who brought him in? Understand a neighbor found him, called the ambulance. Talk to anyone in this family yet? We can't locate them. The ward desk is still trying to track them down. Weak? Pretty rapid. What's the pressure? 80 over 60. Not much to go on. Let's take it in order, John. What do you say the possibilities are here? Head injury, infection, tumor, hemorrhage. Indications? None. Reflex is normal. Possible sedative intoxication. His eyeballs are soft. His pupils aren't contracted, though. Metabolic poisoning, uremia, diabetic acidosis. Let's narrow it down. You start the lab work up? Not yet. He just got here before you came. Well, get it started and have Miss Smith call the attending man on duty. I think Dr. Phelan's on tonight. Right. So the search begins, step by step. Appraising each finding, testing, evaluating, probing to expose the hidden enemy which threatens the life of Danny Ortega. Certainly, there are more ideal circumstances for diagnosis. A conscious patient can offer symptoms, can indicate pain. The unconscious can offer neither. Diagnosis becomes difficult, but not impossible. Gradually, a group of findings, a syndrome, takes form. Definite indications established. Pulse weak and rapid. Subnormal blood pressure. Flushed skin, dry, puffy lips. Heavy, labored breathing. Scattered observations, which taken together might indicate a definite conclusion. Put a retention catheter in the bladder, draw blood for sugar, CO2 in urea, and cross-match for transfusion. Right. What do you think? Well, a lot of possibilities. I'd say it's diabetes. Diabetes mellitus, a drastic upheaval of the body's delicate fuel-burning mechanism. A kind of earthquake which can shatter the carefully balanced chemistry of the human organism to the point of death. The body becomes unable to burn food sugar, the prime source of energy. And this vital ingredient runs off into the bloodstream and is eliminated through the kidneys. Complications are many and critical. Acids are formed. Poisons accumulate in vital areas and tissue starvation begins. Contact any of his family yet? No, but we did locate him, Indy Carter. Seems the boy's a prize fighter. Carter's his manager. Said he'd do his best to track down the relatives. No relief yet? I want a stomach tube and stop the IV saline. If we can check dehydration, it may give him some relief. Yes, Doctor. Oh, uh, has the chaplain been notified? He'll be here as soon as possible. Nurse, would you wait just a moment, please? Yes, Doctor. Lab report, Doctor. It confirms your diagnosis. Diabetes. I thought so. The acetone on his breath suggested that. CO2 combining power, 12 volumes, blood sugar, 680 milligrams per cent. Long way from a normal 120. Coupled with acidosis and shock, that's a long way from anywhere. Start 100 units of insulin. Start 50 IV, 50 sub Q. Blood cross match ready yet? Already. Miss McGregor ordered two units of whole blood to start with. Yes, sir. Pulse still weak and rapid. Blood pressure still 80 over 60. You think we caught it in time? I don't know. He's still got a long way to go. Oh, Dr. Burroughs. Doctor, this is Mr. Carter and Mr. Breyer. They're close friends of Danny's. Oh, yes. How do you do? How do you do, Doctor? Any luck locating the relatives, Mr. Carter? Excuse me. I've looked all over for them, but I just haven't been able to find them. Doctor, what about the boy? What's wrong with him? He has diabetes, Mr. Carter. Pretty severe case. How bad is he, Doctor? Well, he's still unconscious. I think if he can make it through the coma, his chances are good. Well, how come diabetes knocked the kid out, Doc? I never figured it worked that way. It does. Very often. You see, the body needs a substance called insulin to burn sugar, the basic source of energy. Insulin is manufactured in the pancreas that lies deep behind the stomach. Pan what? The pancreas. When certain cells in the pancreas aren't working correctly, there isn't enough insulin for the body. The sugar and other foods aren't used, and the body breaks down. In Danny's case, he became badly dehydrated, went to coma. Gee, he never should have dried out with all that water he drank. How long has Danny been fighting, Mr. Carter? 
Oh, about a year. I picked him out of the amateurs. He's a nice boy. We've been very close. You see, he doesn't have a father. I guess I've been a pretty bad substitute. Has Danny ever been knocked out, Mr. Carter? Oh, no, not that kid. Six pro fights and one of them all going away. He's a great kid, doctor, and has a lot of promise, and he can hit. You know, it's a manager's dream to find a boy like Danny. He's just great. He's through as a professional. I don't think he'll ever fight again. The process of therapy in diabetic coma, the restoration of the delicate balance of chemicals in the blood, is a long, complicated struggle. Recovery can be effected in one to three days, barring complications. During this time, Danny is never left unattended. Every possible means known to modern medical science is used to reverse the progress of the disease. The struggle goes on into the early morning hours of the following day. Blood sugar 350, CO2 30, one plus acetone, two plus sugar. Progress. But run along, Miss McGregor, take your relief. Thank you very much. Doctor, what would you say? He's out of shock. Looks like he's going to make it. Diabetes. Yes, Mrs. Castor. A particularly severe attack. But your brother's going to be all right. I don't get it. He wasn't sick when we left. In young people, the onset can be fairly abrupt. Did you notice any weakness in Danny? Any change of appetite? Appetite? He ate like a horse. Maybe he tapered off the last day or so. Poor kid. It's all our fault. Danny's diet is something he's going to have to watch very carefully in the future. That plus daily injections of insulin. Oh. You mean, you mean, doctor, he's, he's going on dope? Insulin is not a narcotic, Mr. Cast. It's a hormone. Danny? Danny? Rose, what are you doing? Get away from him. Let go of me. Rose, you're crazy or something? Let him alone. You want to catch it? It's not communicable, Mr. Castor. You can't catch it. Well, we better be going anyway. You coming, Rose? Rose, do you hear me? I hear you. Danny? I'm sorry. Rose. I'm coming. Must be nuts. Why'd you have to touch him for? He's my brother. That's why. body self-sustaining in many ways. When an injury is healed, it's forgotten. That's the end of it. The mind is something else. It remembers for the injured organism, and when the injury is healed, the mind wants comfort also. Sometimes it's a simple matter. A familiar voice, a friendly face, to let you know you're not alone and forgotten in a strange and darkened room. Danny? Danny? Hi, kid. Okay. I'm okay now. After careful nursing, Danny passes the critical stage and regains enough strength so that the metabolic tests and education for the lifelong care of his disease may begin. It has already become evident that continued use of insulin will be necessary for Danny. He learns what type he needs, how much, and when to self-administer it. This hormone is giving new life to thousands. Without insulin, it is probable that every young child with diabetes would be dead within a year. Danny proves to be a good patient and a good student. Every phase of technical data related to his disease is readily absorbed, reflecting an above average intelligence. Whenever possible, this instruction is usually extended to at least one member of the patient's family. I'm sure you 
can handle it fine, Danny. Take a little getting used to it first, but you'll manage. Tell me the truth, Doctor. Does anybody ever really get used to it? They do if they accept it. A man by the name of H.G. Wells had diabetes. He did some of his best work when he had the disease. He lived to be 80. Had some pretty good pro tennis players and golfers who have been climbing up the ladder for years with the help of insulin. But I'm afraid professional boxing is a little bit too violent for you, Danny. Got lots of company, by the way, past and present. There are about 60,000 new diabetics every year, as a matter of fact. 60,000? A lot of it's brought on by being too fat, but obviously that isn't your problem. Simply put, Danny, you have diabetes. You just have to learn to live with it. Yeah, I guess maybe you're right. There's no use letting it get you down, Danny. With insulin and with careful attention to diet under doctor's care, you'll make out fine. We used to have a man in the profession named Osla. Dr. William Osla. He's a famous man. And he was responsible for a famous saying. The way to live a long life is to contract a chronic disease and then take care of it. All right, end the sermon. By the way, something here for you. Mindy Carter asked me to give it to you. But he was here this morning. Why didn't he give it to me then? Take a look. I think you'll understand. Danny, when you graduate from art school, we want you to do our pictures. Here's a down payment. And the guys at the gym. For the diabetic, successful therapy doesn't end with physical adjustment. Motive for self-discipline depends on the patient. He must realize that his body is and always will be embarrassed by a deficiency in the chemical required for normal food utilization. After a dietician has prescribed a carefully designed diet for him, Danny is released from the hospital. The staff has done what it could, often more than is asked. It has ended. The future is for Danny Ortega, one of his own making. <laughs>